In this example, uh, you have to bear with me. It's a pretty long example, but it's going to cover most of the ideas that are in the regression, which has been added to the SL curriculum uh, for 2014. So take a moment, read this question here, uh, get a sense of what's being asked. And you might want to pause it so that you can actually read it. Let's, I'll go to, I'll try and break it down into parts. So we're asked to describe the scatter plot of the relationship between the year and Dennis's salary. Well, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go to our calculator and we're going to graph and see what the scatter plot looks like. And so this particular podcast can have lots of calculator material. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go stat. I'm going to edit. And in my L1 and L2, I'm going to enter the year in Dennis, his salary. And I've already done that as such. And then I want to see the scatter plot. So I go second y equals, which is my stat plot. I'm going to hit enter on the first one or the second one or whatever, whichever one I want. I'm going to turn it on. And I want this particular one highlighted. And I want my X list is in L1. So this is my independent variable. And the salary is my dependent variable. And that's good. And so then if I'm there, if I look at my graph, I'm probably not going to see much. But one of the tricks I can do is I can go zoom. If I scroll down, I believe it's zoom nine or zoom zero is zoom stat. What zoom stat does is it looks at all the values that are in my lists and it makes a window to fit that. So when I do that, I get this nice regression here. And so the scatter plot, I have to describe the scatter plot. Well, I, I have several choices. I could say it is strong, moderate, or weak correlation. And this is, I could say that is linear or nonlinear. And then I could also say that it's positive or negative. And I have to choose from each of these lists. Well, I know that I'm going to clearly say it is a strong correlation between X and Y because it's very, very straight. It is linear. And this correlation is always talking about how a linear. So it's a strong linear and it's going, the slope is going positive. And so this is how I would describe it with these three words there. I need all three of them. Then it says calculate the linear regression line. Well, to do that, I'm going to go stat and I want to calculate something, a statistic. I'm going to calculate linear regression number four. And my X list is L1, my Y variables are L2, but my frequency, these, if I look at my table, there's no frequency associated with them. These are just data points. And so I'm going to delete the frequency. There should be nothing in my frequency. And I want to store the regression equation, which means the line of best fit. I'm going to put that into L1, which I go alpha trace Y1. And so then it'll actually put it in there and I'm going to calculate it. And I see this is my regression equation here. It says y is equal to 871x plus 4,000. Oh, the three significant figures says this is going to be 4,010. This is the three significant figures. Three significant figures. That's the equation I'm going to write. But my calculations, I'm going to use the actual values that I have here rounded to many, many decimal places. Okay, then it says explain the meaning of the slope. Well, the first thing I have to recognize is that this is the slope. And it's talking about years and Dennis's salary. And so to talk about the slope, this is C part, I'm going to say, I'm going to start with the X values and say, as an X is the years, as the years increase by one, by one year, The now I talk about the y value, uh, the salary on average, it doesn't work all the time like this. On average, increases it's positive by $871. And that's how I can clearly explain the meaning of the slope in the context of this question here. It doesn't mean that every year it's 871, but on average it's 871. Okay, and C part says, or D part rather, says explain the meaning of the y-intercept in the context of the question. Well, this is 
the y-intercept. Oh, I just realized I missed a zero along the way. It should be 40,000 and 100. Be careful here. Okay, so my y-intercept is this value here. And what the y-intercept means is my initial salary. So when years are zero, year zero, year zero is four zero one zero zero dollars to three significant figures. And often, to, in this case, I know what my starting salary is for 40,000. And this is what the model says. We know that they're not the same. Even a lot of times, this value doesn't even make sense. Sometimes it might be like a negative value, which wouldn't make sense for salary. And we know that the y intercept is often nonsensical, but it still means the initial salary in this case. And then finally, I want to find the R value. Well, in order to find the R value, I have to do something with my calculator first. And this, no one will tell you to do, but I'm going to go to mode and see there's next there. I'm going to go down, down, down to next. And I want my statistics diagnostic, I want to turn it on so that it will diagnose, diagnose the statistics. When I do that, then I want to calculate the regression line. But once I do this, it should be there all, all the time. But I always make sure that's it is true or not. I want to do the regression equation again. I do all the same things I've just done. I'll put y1 in there. I don't have to do it again because it's already there, but I'll just do it as well. And now here is my r value. My r value is simply 0 0.9 nine seven which is very very strong a perfect fit is r equal to one or r equal negative one if it is a negative relationship and ab uh, r equals zero is the worst value you could get for r because that means there's absolutely no relationship of any kind this is very strong r's always go from negative one to one with these being the strongest and zero being the weakest Okay, so there's up to E. Let's go on to the next equations here. F says now, could you use the regression equation to estimate Dennis's salary after 10 years? Well, this list goes up to five. And so the answer is no, because it is extra it's extrapolation. And this is a great math term, extrapolation, which means it's outside the given range of data. The, given range of data. Okay, so now we know our answer. So G part now says, show that the mean point that represents the mean, or sorry, show that the point that represents the mean year and Dennis's mean salaries on the regression line. Well, that means we wanna find X bar, which means the mean, comma, Y bar, which is Dennis's salary. Well. To find these values, again, I'm going to turn to my calculator. And I'm going to calculate, and I'm going to use two variable statistics. This is the only time I use two variable statistics. Hit enter. List one, list two, again, are my lists for my years. Frequency is blank. And I'm going to calculate. And I see that X bar is 2.5. And you notice there's an arrow here. That means there's more information to see. So if I scroll down, I see Y bar is 42250. So I want to show that this point is on my regression equation. Well, if I look at my regression equation, it says Y is 871X plus 40100. That's the regression equation. In order to do it, I'm going to plug x in. So I get 817 times 2.5 plus 4100. And when I do that, when I do this calculation, I want to find out when x is 2.5. And indeed, I get a value of 42250 
for my y equation. This is so now, therefore, x bar, y bar is on the regression line. Okay. Last two questions. Now it says the regression line for Birkin's salary is this equation. To the nearest tenth of a year, state the range of years from which Birkin makes more money than Dennis. Well, I have my calculator, of course. I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to turn off the dots. And I'm going to graph Birkin's salary here, which is 1600x plus 30,000. And then let's see here my window. I want to make sure I get my y intercept. I'm going to change it just a bit. And I'm going to make this 30,000. And we'll make this a little bit higher, let's say 60,000. And we'll even change our y scale, we'll make the 10,000s. Now, I'm not sure what my year is going to be, so I'm going to extend my x max to 10. And uh, now let's see what we get. There's the first one. This is Dennis's line. And this is Birkin's line. Okay, I haven't gone up far enough to show where he makes uh, more money than Dennis. So let's change my window again. Let's make this 20 years. And I'm even going to make Birkin's line bold. And let's graph this one now. And so I know at this point, Birkin starts to make more money. So what I want to do is I want to find out when is this equation, 16x plus 30,000, bigger than Dennis's, which is 871x plus 40100. I want to know when is this true, what x value. Well, if I come and I calculate this intersection, uh, 5, 1, 2, I get x is bigger than 13.8. So that's when x's are bigger than Birkin. So to the nearest tenth of a year, state the range of years from which Birkin makes more money than Dennis. So that's the range, and I'm just going to double check the actual question. The original question, oh. and let's see, I know that this is, each friend decides they work for 40 years and then quit. It goes up to 40. So it does not end here, and so my range is going to be 13.8x less than 40 years. So this is the range of years for which Birkin makes more money than Dennis. Be careful of this because it seems like it's kind of tricking you to talk about the y value, but it's really talking about the x's. Finally, I part then says, based upon Birkin's model for his salary, how much money will Birkin have made over his 40 years of working? Well, based upon this model, I know his first year, he's going to make 30,000. His next year, if x is 1, he's going to make 31, 6, 0, and so on. And if I look at my table here, um, and let's go table set. I'm going to start at, let's say, 38. And we're going to go up by 1 years. Enter. And let's look at, so now, here are their salaries. Birkin's the second one. In this 40th year, this is going to go plus dot 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 plus the 40th year he makes 94000. Zero, zero, zero. And I want to know what's the salary he's going to make over these entire years. Well, each year I add on a 1600. And so this is an arithmetic this is an arithmetic series. And so now I want to find the sum of the 40 terms. My formula for arithmetic series, I have a couple of them, but here's one of them. I know it's n over 2, u1 plus un. So I'm going to say this is 40 over 2, u1 is 30,000, 
plus un is 94000, which is 20. Um, and I'm just going to do this in my calculator. So it's 20 times 30, 1, 2, 3, 30,000 plus 94000, and parentheses. And so my Birkin makes over his 40 years career, he pulls in 2480000. Zero, zero. He makes almost 2.5 million. Or I could have done it this way. The other formula says S sub n is equal to n over 2, 2u1 plus n minus 1d, which is then S sub 40. 40 over 2. u1 is my first term, which is 30,000. N is 40, so it's 39. D is my slope of 1600. And again, when I do that, I'll get 2480000. Lots of information in these particular linear regression, and that this example has covered most of the ideas, if not all of them, that I can think of for linear regression.